Now to avoid this just being a static create right here, we're going to have to add an input field so we can start actually adding real information for creating a new joke. Now how do we do that? Well back to our Yannick documentation, the components right here, and jumping into inputs. We need an input field. Now I want something like this, I like the, the um, placeholder labels, up to you which one you want to use, there's a lot to pick from right here. I'm going to pick the placeholder labels right here. It pretty much just means that it'll write something until I start typing, it'll remove it, so I kind of have an information, this is the username, blah blah, and it gets away, so I can just type in the username. So let's just make such an uh, input field right here inside our joke app. Now, I might as well just say this is not going to be pretty, we're going to make it shine later. For now, I just want to kind of show you guys how to use the input. Now, how do we use an input? Well, going back to the documentation, it says we need to have a yarn list in the outermost root. Now, we don't really need this, this is just to make uh, kind of some lines and to make it look like a list of different input fields that are working together. So we're just going to use that example. The other one we need is the yarn item. The yarn item inside the list right here. I'm going to add a yarn item. Yarn item, yarn item, there we go. So inside the yarn item, we're going to add our input. Now this is the actual input. This is the actual field you see right here. The other things are just outlining like we're seeing right here. So let's just add the yarn input inside our yarn item. Yarn input. There we go, Kajumi. So now we have the yarn input, and what does the yarn input need? Well, it needs the type that you're putting in. So either in this case, we're using either text or the password. The difference is if you type here, you'll see some text, but if you're putting in the type of password, you'll just see dots, right? We want to use text because we want to see what we're actually typing in. So we're going to add the type of text. There we go. What is the other thing we need to actually call ourselves a yarn input? We need the placeholder, that's what I talked about. I want a placeholder so that when there's nothing here, it'll kind of explain, you need to type in the username right here. But our placeholder is going to say something else. It's going to say the placeholder is going to just ask for a setup, right? So what should be the setup for the joke? There we go. So let's just have a look at this actually shows now. There we go, now we're saying setup right here and we can start typing and it'll put in the setup name. Now it looks, again, hideous, I don't care right now. We have the get another and we have the create button down here. Let's just keep that for now. What we need to do is this final thing, is kind of like, we need to explain to the TypeScript file that we're going to get a property here. We're going to have a new property where we can store the information about what we're putting in here. Now this is new, so let me just try and do it in a few lines right here. First of all, we need to use something called the ng model to kind of store the information for our system. So we're going to add the square brackets and with a parentheses set inside. Now this is just weird, but you have to get used to it. This is just a syntax. We're going to in here add the ng model. That's kind of what we want. That's a way for us to explain. We're going to talk to the TypeScript file that's going to have a property of some name. And let's just call this the setup prop for now. So the setup property, right? It could be any name here. I'm just going to call the setup prop for now. Now the setup prop, it says there's an error right now because it doesn't know about the property or the variable called setup property inside the TypeScript file. So we have to go and define that. Just like we have a joke property right now, we're going to add right below here, we're going to add a setup prop like this. And that going, that's going to be equal just an empty string for now. Equal an empty string. That's all we have to do. Now this input field is actually bound together to the setup property. And you'll see that because it's purple now, that means that it knows there's a setup property in here. But how do we know if it's actually putting information in there? Well, just like we used the curly brackets for showing a joke right here, we're using the curly brackets for showing a joke. We can actually also use the curly brackets for showing our setup prop now. So let me just try and add the curly brackets and just write setup prop. There we go. So now when I'm typing something into this field right here, it should show itself down here with the setup prop. Let's actually add this as an H4 so you guys can really see there's a difference here. Adding the H4 right here. There we go. Let's try and see if we can actually now write some information. So notice when I'm putting in information here, I'll say hi, it pops down here in the H4. So they are bound together. And let's put in a snurf, it's popping up down here. Now how does it work? Well, as soon as I start typing anything into the input field, because I added this ng model, I'll use what we call two-way binding. As soon as I put any information into this property right here, into the input field, it'll automatically set that information inside the TypeScript field, right here, that property right here. Now when that is set, 
everything inside the HTML will listen and say, whoops, this guy changed. And in the HTML, it'll say, I'll just update this field right here. So if I, had, I just add this again as an H1, maybe again as an H5, or sorry, an H2, etc., etc. All of these will actually be updated as soon as I type something in here. Now, let me show what I mean. Hi, whoops, I, you'll see the update is instant. So now we have the binding. Now they're bound together. So I can start putting stuff into an input field. It'll automatically update it inside the TypeScript field. So what will we use that for? I'll show you in the next lesson. See you next time.